Hey family, welcome to this episode of IYMI, in case you missed it. It's your girl Esther, the yummy mummy, with my darling, prudent Auntie Esme, my other co-host, Miss Karen Grace, and um, we have here the amazing Maoli Gavo. <laughs> amazing, I'll take. That's all, you're going to leave it at amazing? Dashing. Okay, uh huh. Looking very summary. You go if you do some five for me, I don't go like, hey, amazing, hey. dashing, looking dashing. very summary. Um, two more. Handsome. I won't. Hats. I can't do this. Are you serious? Ha chocolatey. Oh. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Five is enough. Good How to be here. Doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, all of you. You're so welcome. You're welcome. Good to be in the hot seat today. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a hot Am seat. I safe? You are. Um, I mean, we can't for promise now. anything, but you are for now. We okay. like to start all with right. sleep. I love it. No, no, no. I'm, I've, I've been looking forward to it for a while. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. That's Let's see what this is going to be like. <laughs> this episode is entitled, This is a Man's World. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? It's been set up to be a man's world, yes. Technically, it isn't. But that's, that is how we have set it up over the last couple of centuries, mm -hmm. slash decades. I think mm -hmm. we can stay right there and dwell there. So you said it's been set up to be a man's world, but technically, it isn't. Yes. We're liking you a mm -hmm. bit more and more. <laughs> I want to say that we are feminists. We are feminine. That's mm -hmm. God's original mm -hmm. agenda and design for us as women. However, I love the fact that you have said that's how it was set up, yes. but that's not how, mm, I'm paraphrasing now, that's not how it's supposed to be. So yes. what are Mawali's thoughts uh -huh. on what it should be in this world for both men and for women? To be perfectly honest, I, I feel like at this point, we've, the, the, the facts are clear that it really doesn't matter which mm. gender you are. Mm. The reality is we have some women doing some incredible things. We have some men doing some very incredible things. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've realized that both people can do both things, mm -hmm. I think anybody who is capable should be allowed to do whatever it is that they, they feel like they can mm. do. Yeah. The reality is women are not able to do some things as good as men. Absolutely. The reality is men are not able to do a lot of things as good as women. Mm. And I, I feel like it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be that way. We should be celebrating those things as opposed to be saying, you should also do that, you should also do that. Mm. Um, yeah. There's tons of things that you would be way better at than I could ever be. And I, I, I Example. love that. Mm. Example. Example. Come on, we need concrete facts here. Mm -hmm. so give instance, me five. With, give, with, give, give, give us five. five. We instance, I, I don't know about five, but I personally <laughs> believe that women should be running countries more than anything. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. absolutely. Yeah. I think COVID's proven I that I agree well. with you. Yes, I mm. think with your ability to process things in certain ways and I guess maybe organization and... I don't know what it is. I'm not the one that created human beings. So I don't know what God put into women. I just feel like there's something about women that makes it a bit easier for them mm -hmm. to handle things. Maybe, I mean, I, I know men can multitask as well. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, especially like you said, with COVID and everything that we saw around the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, we probably need a, a, a couple more women running. Mm. running I think that's an interesting in the world. segue. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there because one of the questions that we have for you today is talking about being multi hyphenated okay. and having multiple skills. And we know a little birdie told us, aka a bit of research, ah, ah. Uh, that you used to be an accountant. Still am. Yeah. Oh, you still are. Yes. Excellent. So you're still chartered, and you transitioned then into the world of acting. Yes. Um, you know, and anyone who is sort of digitally savvy or just has any conversation nowadays knows that lots of people carry multiple skills yes. um, and it's very difficult particularly if we're talking about over here in Africa and namely Ghana mm -hmm. um, and any other of the countries in our continent that may be watching and tuning in um, it's hard to house all of those things but it's equally hard sometimes to be able to express yourself and say well I'm good at this but I can also lend myself to this type of thing oh and I have aspirations to be this type of man too so yes. how did Mawali channel those two skill sets and those passions and all the things that come with them to be able to be successful in both? Uh, hmm. I have this thing. Hmm. I hate being anything but first. Mm. Hate it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Since I was a kid, like if, if, if I wasn't first in class, I would come home and cry. Mm. Now, don't get it. I, I wasn't always first. Mm. A lot of the time I would be first sometimes, but the reality is sometimes there's just some people who are smarter than you. Yeah. Um, it took me years to like accept that within my heart, mm. that guy. See, some people get ahead past you. It's, mm. it's, it's normal. But with almost everything I do, I would like to be, if not the best, one of the best. Mm. And I feel like that's what led to me doing everything that... I, I personally feel like I could have done anything. I feel like I, if I wanted to be a doctor, I could have become a doctor. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to be a NASA engineer, I could have done that. That's just what I, f what I feel in me, what I have in me. Unfortunately, I might not have been the best doctor. I might not have been the best NASA or whatever. 
So at every different point, I kept trying to say, what is it that I, that I can actually be good at? Eventually, I found business, finance, computer science. It seemed like that area for me, okay. I, was, I seemed to be pretty good at it. So that's yeah. what informed my high school, uni. That's what I studied. Um, and that's what I still run around in. Um, unfortunately, when I did get into the corporate world and where I was working at that particular time, I didn't feel like it was enough for me. I didn't feel like I could be the absolute best mm. there because there were tons of people doing, I counted them on auditors, thousands of people doing it. And yeah. what it would take for me to be the best, I would have had to stay there three years, write one exam, then, then after my fifth year, write another exam and then do all of that. At that point in my life, I felt like I have something a bit more in me than doing that. Not that there's anything wrong with it, just my own personal decision. Mm, okay. So as life just seemed to happen in one way or the other, these opportunities that I knew could come my way, eventually did come my way. I ended up being a brand ambassador for Martini, which was yeah. complete, I wouldn't say luck, but it was complete, not coincidence, because God, mm. God doesn't do coincidence. Mm. But things happened in a way that I was finally able to, to, to do something that I could actually be one of the best at. Um, so when it was time to leave my job as an accountant and pursue more of the work in the media space, it was amazing because then I actually get to do something that even if I'm not going to be the best, I will 1,000% be one of the best. Mm, and that's yeah. what the last five years has been about. So. Mm. And how was that transition? So you said you, know, you got headhunted effectively to become the brand ambassador for Martini, yes. which then ended up opening all these other doors for you from like a media partnership perspective. Mm -hmm. How was that communicated to your nearest and dearest? Was that important to you to communicate that oh, or did yeah. you just sort of launch into it? It was probably one of the most difficult periods of my life. Mm. Not in terms of hardship, like, oh my God, my life is going crazy, mm. but in terms of you're at a huge fork. I yeah. trained my entire life for one yeah, thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I did not do a single bit of entertainment or media or whatnot yeah. in my, none of that. My entire life was just, once I knew what I wanted to do, it was just business, computer science, finance. That's, that's all I've ever done, all I've ever known. So at one point to say you're leaving all of that to go do, acting. once again, that's exactly, acting, entertainment. It's, it, it seemed, what is it like, did you lose your mind or something? Mm. Especially back then. Mm. The reality is back then people weren't really, I wouldn't say cashing out, but people weren't doing as well, even yeah. with our musicians and everything. I don't think even back then we knew the heights that entertainment and media and yeah. all of these things could soar to. At, back then, Netflix and everything weren't as ubiquitous. It wasn't all around. So yeah. we didn't know the power that it already had. Mm. Um, so most people would assume that I had, I had gone some type of crazy. They would ask my parents, like, what's going on with Maui? Like, is, yeah. he, is he okay? Like, is he yeah. going through like a... Midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. Yeah. So it was. It, it definitely wasn't easy. Yeah. Fortunately for me, I have pretty incredible parents, and even then, it was super tough. I didn't tell them at first. I actually quit my job, and then I told them later on. Oh wow. Um, but it was super tough, yeah. like to tell them that, yo, this thing that we've been training for my whole life, mm. I think I'm gonna go do go do something else, and not even some regular thing. Entertainment. Acting. Well, it yeah. wasn't just acting. It was because I was hosting TV shows. I was. Yeah. Um, doing commercials. How do they feel about it now? What was their reaction in um, in terms of then mm -hmm. and right now? Yeah. Oh, there's no there's in no comparison. sugar coating. There's no sugar coating. It, it, it wasn't easy for them. It, mm. it, it was a very confusing. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't yeah. understand. However, based on what we've been through as a family and how close knit we are, I feel like they knew that I was independent and intelligent enough to be able to make a decision that I felt. So it all came down to, look, if you thought about it and if you think that you can do this and this is good for you, it's all good, go do it. If you fail, you can always come back. Mm, um, but wow. go do, but go do what you need to do. And that gave me the impetus to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to go do it. I, I, I moved to Nigeria. I didn't know a single person there. Yeah. Moved there, lived there for five years. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was based on that strength, that having that support system saying, listen, go do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. It might work out, it might not work out, but you should have Why did you have to go to Nigeria? Unfortunately... You knew nothing, nobody in Nigeria. No. Um, you went on a dream. Basically. Basically. And walk us through your first time in Nigeria. Oh, you don't and how you, Nigeria. how you then um, got into the filming scene in Nigeria. Um... So once again, back then, this was actually during Ebola time. Wow, wow. Yeah, so it was, not, it was not the time to be traveling around. Mm -hmm. um, but I had moved to Ghana recently, and I was, I, I was still doing my work at the accounting firm. Okay. And what I was getting from it wasn't 
I wasn't fulfilling my needs in that way in terms of I didn't feel like what I was doing was so amazing. So I, I, I already wanted the change. Yeah. The Martini thing came just by kismet, like God just wanted it to happen in that mm -hmm. way. Um, but because of the scale of, of that campaign, I was on billboards, I was on TV, I was, on, I was in newspapers, so I was everywhere, yeah. mm -hmm. all, all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So it now becomes, who's this person, who's this, and you start getting offered TV roles, like, oh, would you come host this show? Once again, not what I had done, but I knew that I could do it, because yeah. I've, I've watched these shows my entire yeah. life, I know that I have it in me to be able to, so I'll go to people, I'll have mentors, and they would show me, and eventually I started hosting my own show and doing all of that. In Nigeria? No, 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 this is still in Ghana. Ghana. Unfortunately... Ghana at that time wasn't able to match the productivity that I needed. Mm. If you're going to do a great movie or a great mm. TV show, you're going to have to wait like a year, one a year maybe. Mm. Canadians, we're not, we weren't at yeah. that stage yet. Yeah. At that point, however, Nigeria was just about to take off, take off. to start to, to take off. And now we can see where, the, where mm. it yeah. is that they brought yeah. into. Yeah. At that point, they were just about to take off. And I was, I guess, intuitive enough to see that it might be better for me in that, for, for that space. Mm -hmm. However, even that decision wasn't my own decision. I was working with Mnet, Mnet Africa. Mm -hmm. I was hosting a show for them. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria? And yes, but their main studios are in Nigeria and then in SA. Okay. They, don't have, they don't have studios in Ghana. Yeah. So eventually the decision was made for me. I, if I wanted to work with that big network, I had to go to mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But the very first time, I just went to audition for a show, Hush, the one I shot with RMD yeah. for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Knew nobody. I just, I just landed in the airport. This is me, like looking around, like surely, what is, what is happening right now? I went to the audition. Fortunately, and this is a, this is a super important point for me. I can't tell the story without that point because everything was set up for me for the Nigeria move by a friend of mine, Chris Atto, who oh, was, man. who is, he was a Ghanaian actor. Now he's an international actor. But yes. yeah. he was set up, and he had already moved to Nigeria and everything. And I find it important because. Back then, nobody would do that. Mm. If anything, I was supposed to be his competition. Yeah. Nobody goes and creates avenues for their competition. Mm. So that's why I appreciate people who are able to help other people without thinking what, what's, what's in it for myself. Yeah. Most mm, people yeah. would be saying, if I help this guy out, he's also going to grow and he's also yeah. going to come yeah. take yeah. my spot. Yeah. Yeah. He did the opposite. He went there and he was like, listen, guys, I know this Canadian guy. You guys need to use him. You oh, guys wow. need to. He went and paved all wow. the path. So when I landed, the path was already paved for me. Wow. So I just went, I met with them, but I was still afraid of Nigeria. So I still had about five, six hours before my flight. I went right back to the airport and I sat there <laughs> waiting in the airport for, for five, six hours until my flight. Daunting. And then I flew back to Ghana. Because once again, I knew I had no Nigerian no connection. Yeah. Didn't hear anything for a while, and a few weeks later, they called and said, "Hey, you want to move to Nigeria? We're ready for you." Wow! And that, that wow! Was it. So you know, it so you up stakes, and mm. you were gone. Basically, wow. basically, mm. basically, that's very brave. It was. It, it was not. Uh, it was one of those. Are you gonna do it, or are you gonna let this pass? Moments, yeah. mm. and I'm like, you know, let's just let's just so do you it. You made a split decision. I bet you have not regretted. Um, not for a single second. Okay. Not for a so single second. So, what was the first thing you did in Nigeria? Um, what was the experience you had at that time? The, like the first project or, or the first the day? First product. So the, first it was um, a show for Mnet. It was called Hush. Mm. Uh, Mnet's been running this long-term show called Tinsel for at least, mm. they, they'd been running it for about almost, almost a decade. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to do something new that was dynamic that was on, a, on, a, on, a, on an amazing level and everything. So they put everything they had into it. They got amazing actors from all over. They got RMD, they got Chucky Bella, they got like Adil all, all all these people, they put them together. And then they got me from Ghana, who technically I, I wasn't a, an established name, but they still put me in there with everybody else. So this is a huge project that is filming every day, a week for one year. We shot for 290 something days. Um, which was not the plan when I got there. That's not what I thought I was going to do. But this ended up, once. so my first project in Ghana, Martini, ended up being huge. I'm all over the place. So yeah. my first project in Nigeria ends up being the biggest thing. We're on bit where one of the biggest shows in the country at yeah. that time. Yeah. So I was just blessed that the things that I ended up doing ended up being some of the biggest at the time. So it was very easy to just continue from there mm. upwards in a, in, a, in a trajectory. Mm. So let's talk about how now your parents felt. Yes. Mm. And what did they say? What encouragement did they give you? Just walk us through that experience as well. Then we can continue. Right. So how they felt um, then or now? now? Well, they had here they were. They trusted mm -hmm. you could do well. Yes. They gave you the their blessing for yes. you to go out there and saw. Yes. You you were you were sorry. Yes. 
What Five was your first reaction? What was the follow up? How has it been? I feel like with, with my parents, or at least we keep telling them that the, the, the greatest thing that they ever did was raise us because yes. we, we, we yeah. believe that they, we definitely didn't have everything, mm -hmm. not even close. But we believe that what they were able to give us was way beyond like money or like wealth or any of, any of those things. So it was one of those, you raise good kids, so you should hope that you did a good job because now that job is over. That's for the reason you raise us finishes. Either we're bad children or we're, we're good people. That part is over. We, we've left your yeah. home. So just trust that you were, and I think it was more vindication for them that, oh, so we actually, so he, he was actually right. He, he did know what he was doing and it was, and now it's fantastic for them because they, no matter where they are in the world, they would have people come and ask them like, oh, is that, my dad says he calls it collateral popularity now because he says now, because people ask him, oh, are you Mali's father, not is Mali your son? Your son, wow. So, and I have like people in South Africa and America and whatnot, just because of the last name, they would be yeah. able to say, oh, Double. is that, are you, are you related to him and whatnot? And, being able to do that for a family is, 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 is a nice thing. It's yeah. to be able to say that at least with, with our family name out there, people know something, hopefully something good about it. Mm. What's the packing order of the, of the kids? Where do you belong? I'm, in, I'm in the middle. So I have, a, I have an older brother who's an overachiever. I have a younger sister who's another overachiever. So I needed to do something in a different way to achieve so I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. compete with them. So at That's least I've also done something in my own corner. But yeah, it was, it was tough for them in the beginning, but they knew that if... They raised me right, I should be fine, and by God's grace, it ended up being pretty fantastic. So okay. now they know that I'm in a good space. Now they, it's simple, oh, what do you need? Are you, oh, you're going off to Jamaica? Okay, great, um, mm. we'll see you in two weeks. Or you're going off to, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, we're here for you if you need that's anything. That's all a parent wants, and as a mother, yes. I feel, mm -hmm. I, I, I can feel what your parents feel. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I'm beaming with smells, but I feel the smells within me. Mm. And it's like, talking to a son yes. who is achieving and, and you said one thing that resonated with me mm -hmm. and I've also thought about that for my, my parents uh -huh. they, do, they did but they raised you right and they've done whatever you have now yes. is what was the foundation yes absolutely foundation. Mm -hmm. no no two ways that, that's wonderful no two ways it's yeah. good to be appreciated and i'm sure your parents really are thankful oh by now they know yes. by now by now they know yeah how how comfortable has acting been now because you didn't have any um prior training for it how does how do you feel in front of the camera with the ladies you know because i've seen some roles of you maoli topless and yeah. you know getting fans mm -hmm. how does it feel like how is it like with regard to acting, like I said, in my heart, there's nothing that I don't think I can't do. Like, as you, you give me anything and I will do at it. least do a decent job. Mm -hmm. um, so when it came to acting, it, was, it, it wasn't one of those things where I lacked confidence or do this or that. So um, I personally think it was, just, it was just grace. It's one of those things. Najam, Najam, I'm waiting for you, no if you lose. Mm -hmm. If it's yours, it's yours. Mm -hmm. the, no, nobody, nobody can take it from you. Nobody can... Uh, distract you from Absolutely. it or whatnot if it's if it's meant to be yours and you put that faith in god that yeah I'm, give me what's mine he will get and he, he gave it to me half the opportunities the things that i did all the big big i've been in some of the biggest films and worked with some of the biggest people and all of yeah. those things i would never say it's because me personally i was just if if it's yours it's yours yeah. you know Absolutely. those those doors will be open for you and then you get to prove whether you're worthy of being there and at every point i try to prove how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like a demigod or <coughs> it makes you humble? Because there are some situations that people get into and they, their attitude actually brings them down. You, yes. don't, you don't strike me as someone who is full of it, mm. that everything's gone into your head. I feel, like I, feel, I feel like I, too many people know me in real life for me to be, mm. able, to, for me to, be able to suddenly be... Something else. Um, yeah, I, I didn't come from everything. It's, it's, it's not like, I'm not saying like, oh my God, we're living in a shack or whatnot, but I didn't come from having everything that you always wanted just at your, at your fingertips. Every little thing you would have to yeah. work pretty, pretty hard from it, yeah. for it. So that's, that's always, that's who I've always been, I guess. Mm. So now being, being, being in this place, mostly I find it amusing that like people call me and oh, I, I saw you on TV and, and, and it's more like ha ha moment for me as opposed to yeah, I'm on TV, that's me. I, yeah. it's, it, it's impossible for me to see myself in that way. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why, it's just not. Also, I think 
I've been fortunate to work with some pretty big people, some Hollywood stars, Hollywood directors, Hollywood everything. Um, and one of the biggest that I did work with was Idris when he came to shoot here and I met Idris him Elba. and everything, yeah. yes. And that was a huge defining moment in my life because this is somebody who the whole time through college and everything I was watching on The yeah. Wire and he had done his Mandela film, he had done the Marvel, he was Thor. I'm thinking this is the biggest black super, my hey God, yeah. I will feel just faint. And then I meet him and then we're actually just jamming and That's the reality is, scary. say what? A goofy just thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll notice that half my, half my thing. Half my thing. But then you, you, you meet these people and you realize that, one, they're just human beings. Mm. Uh. The, the same way I look at somebody like that, I know there's also people looking at me. Well, at the end of the day, we're all just really just yeah. human beings yeah. um, who will act normal. So I'm thinking, if this is somebody who's done everything else in the world, who's been on Marvel films and played yeah. Mandela and yeah. acted with Beyonce and this and that, yeah. if this person isn't raising shoulders, why would... That's, that's, that's how I see things, yeah, you know, if, if he's humble, then I'm yeah. pretty sure we should, those of us who are still doing our small films over here and everything, mm -hmm. pretty sure we should at least be some kind of humble. But mm -hmm. regardless for me, I feel like we're all just human beings. Working with RMD, for instance, I go out with RMD in Nigeria and there's people who are shaking, um, you know, maybe if they stand next to him. Perception is a very interesting thing. Wow. But as long as we keep reminding ourselves that, you know, end of the day, these people are just human beings, um, it makes it a lot easier. So I can't look at myself in that way that I know there's people who, even when they're taking pictures, I can feel them shaking and whatnot. And I'm like, no, what are you doing? Just relax. It's, it's not that big of a deal. But perception has created that thing for us. But at every moment, we should always just remind ourselves, we're all just really human. We watched Bill Cosby for decades, yeah. and we elevated mm -hmm. him, and he was the biggest. And I'm not saying one or the other, but the reality is he was also just a human being. Mm -hmm. Human beings will let us down no matter yeah. what. No matter what. Yeah. So why, why? I'm not a god. I, I love that. Sometimes it feels like one. No, I, I, let me not lie. If I go somewhere and like, there's people, oh my god, like, can I just get a photo and this and that? Yes, you get that feeling. But then as you get that feeling, it's up to you to remind yourself that, like, guy. Don't get too gassed. Don't, don't, don't get, get too, yeah. yeah. Don't get lost in the sauce, man. You, yes. But you can choose not to remind yourself. Don't, there's people who go up with it and they're like, oh, yeah, you get home and you're thinking, but you get home, yeah. we all take off our clothes and we're all just mm -hmm. <laughs> no yeah. human beings. Mm -hmm. With regard to my being, the, being topless or whatnot, I put a lot of work into working out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, if you knew me from before, I was super skinny growing up. Mm -hmm. Super, super skinny. Um, so how did you do this? I, I decided, this I, I, decided I, I didn't want to be skinny anymore. <laughs> it, was, it was a personal decision for me that I'd lived most of my life in that way and I personally didn't want to be that anymore. So I put a lot of work into it. It wasn't by luck, it wasn't by quite a bit of work. So if I'm in a role... How many hours in the gym that day? If I'm free, I would like to do two hours four, four times a week. Mm, after um, 20 minutes, AJ, if you're watching this, my personal trainer back in the UK, I'm like, AJ, please. That's what I would prefer, but <laughs> to, to find that free time is also very tough. Um, so I go through periods where I'm in the gym a lot, and I go through periods where I'm not in the gym for like two, three months. Um, but for me, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a personal thing. So if it happens to fit into what they want for the role, I'm not upset with you that you're looking for somebody who fits a role of a, of a great physique and you call me. I'm not, why would I be angry about that? It's like saying, not. They picked you to be Captain America and um, Chris Evans should be like, oh my God, right? No, it's not my fault that I, like, I worked hard to be, or Hugh Jackal who plays Wolverine and whatnot. Yeah. It's not his fault that he looks good and he's worked on his body. Mm. If they want to call him for a thousand and one um, action roles, I, I personally have no yeah. problem with it. So. It actually helps for you not to be stereotyped. Yes. Because if you do multi roles, yes. then it's difficult for them because they tend to put, especially black Yes. Actors, yes. Uh, or black people mm. in roles, and the, if you start as a villain, you will always be a villain. Mm. So, yes. Um, yes. I, I like what you said. Like so I was, I was fortunate that I was able to do quite a number of different ones. Unfortunately, though, what you notice is you will be remembered most for what's most. Um, so people will watch the scenes, but however, if there's one scene where you are, you have your top off and you look, that's the one that's going to be burned into their memory because one they, they don't see it too often. So I can do ten films in a year. Two of them I'm topless, but maybe in that topless scene it's like a huge steamy something you're like guy. All your films this year, you're just like no. If you watch them, you, one of them I was a pastor, one of them I was this one. But those are the ones that you remember the most. Once again, that's not going to be my. Ones. It's not going to be my that fault that. that. Mind. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's not. It's not my fault that mm -hmm. that's 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 what you're remembering. That yeah, that that one is up to you, but mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's. Okay. We'll, we'll address the elephant in the room. What do you uh -huh. think about you know, given the scenario just now, you do maybe you know. 
for example, 10 films a, a year. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't do 10 films a year, but like, do, well, Jesus name and, and way more. I, I wouldn't want to do 10 films in a year, actually. No, it's quite intense. It, it would mean that the quality of the films individually wouldn't be mm. as yeah. high as you I would want them to be. You almost a little bit. So I would like to be able to pick two, three big projects a year and, okay. then, and then do that. Um, but I'm always open to collaborate. So mm -hmm. it, it might be 10 films, it might be 10 amazing projects. I'm not saying I'll never mm -hmm. do that. But for me, it's less, less is, is always better. So let's imagine you're doing two to three for the mm -hmm. year. And out of those three, two of them are Marily, you know, shower scene, steamy, looking mm -hmm. pumped. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a natural correlation there, you know, with moving slowly into the direction of the ladies. Mm -hmm. OK, we're, we're moving into the direction of the ladies. You're probably not going to answer, but I'm going to shoot my shot anyway. Oh, feel free. Is there a uh -huh. lady in Sir Mawali's life? Yes. Amazing. Yeah. OK, this is good. This yeah. is good. Is that all we're going to get for now? You can ask, and then ask, ask yeah. how, how, okay. how we talk about okay. it. Okay. So in my interviews, you're always free to ask anything. As Amazing. to the types of answers you get, oh, now and yeah, we'll leave it to God. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it to God, yeah. Absolutely. So, so is this lady Ghanaian, Nigerian, African, white? She is a mixture of everything. Amazing. I would have to list about three or four nationalities. Ooh, very pretty. What can I, I say? That. It's a career I go market. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I, had I, I had to. like the Nigerian. Um, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Between the two. Yeah. 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 Mm, okay. What okay. else do you want to know? And how did you guys meet? I was filming and I met her outside of the set location. So that is a movie in itself. So, what, so while you were working, you were basically, working. Basically, yeah. Hey, working. Yeah, she was actually on her way out of the country. So. Okay. It was, a, it was one of those movie moments. I was shooting a scene and I just walked outside because it was kind of hot. Okay. And I was you saw her? You saw her? And you saw her? No, I didn't even know. So I was like, ah, that nice saw too. And that kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't actually yeah. say it like that. But yeah. she was waiting outside for her car, which was pulling up. Okay. And then we ended up talking. And she was like, oh, yeah. Um, we ended up having a lot of things in common within that like two two minute conversation. I love that. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. So we That's found out like that we us. had... Yeah quite yeah, a bit in okay. common so it's just like mm. oh are you serious are you serious are you serious and then from there mm. we decided we would talk and we spoke a bit when she was who away called who? did you call her she texted and then i called come on gentlemen <laughs> strike while the eye is hot <laughs> we love it so bad oh i love it this time i'm really excited <laughs> and just i started coming there she's like you're ginger <laughs> I hope she's smiling because I'm coming. I'm coming. Marriage level or how are we doing it? I mean, let me drink my tea. No, boy. no, no. Cool down, cool down. It's not time for that. Marriage level or what are we doing? <laughs> well, I mean, better be. We're just in God. We're just in God. Hello, dear. Eagle Hello, dear. Yeah, hello, dear. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay, dear. How are you? <laughs> Oh, well, no. back to you, no, no, no. Oh, it's back right? That's not about us. Yeah, it's about you, son. You know how it is. You okay. said you do Quick other shift. things that, um, besides acting. What yes. other things are you, are you into? Uh, most recently, I opened a bar in Ghana, which was my Amazing. first Ghanaian venture in a, in a while. Me and a couple of my partners. Um, so that's our foray into the nightlife space. That's what Wait, we're okay. trying. It's in Yaniba. It's an Osu. Okay. Yes, it's called Mojo. Mojo Bar. Mojo Bar. Oh, right. God, my Mojo. Chill. I like that. Wicked. I like that. Hey. I like hey. Hey. Yep. Hey. Hey. I like that. Hey. Hey. So it we'll it takes me back you. a few years. Mojo. Come on. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. Um, but one of the first things I did when I got to Nigeria was set up a production company. Oh, in Nigeria? Uh, it's based in Ghana, but uh, okay. we set it up in Ghana. Okay. But because my because I didn't come from an entertainment background, the business part of it for me is always my <coughs> main focus. Mm -hmm. um, so because when I, of the accountancy. Because of because of yeah my background. So when I got there and everything, being an actor, it was it, it was great, but it would have never been the end goal. So mm. the first thing I was trying to do is how can I be on the other side? How can I make money from this separate mm. from being an actor? I had mentors, one of my, Victor Sanchez, who was a director and a producer, who would talk to me freely about these kinds of things. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is doable. Mm. I can actually do this myself. Mm. However, I couldn't, not with my money. So I put together a couple of my partners. Everything I do, I always collaborate. It's always easier to do things with other people. Yeah, definitely. Infinitely easier than to say, I'm mm. going to do this on myself and this thing. Uh, so I collaborated with a couple of people, my brother, some other friends from uni, and we, we started a production company together. 
and we started producing our own films. And we did our first one, it was fantastic. We distributed it ourselves, produced it ourselves, wow. um, made money from it, we went on to the second one. So now we have a whole unit going on that we're Whoa. trying to, cool. um, That's to blow up. And hopefully, in the next couple of years, we'll be hearing that we are some of the biggest producers in Ghana. But I mean, that's always, been the, uh, that's exactly. always been the end game. That's always been the end game. Wonderful. Mm. Yep. Figuring out how to be on the other side. So yeah. I am grateful of being an actor, TV presenter and everything. That's fantastic. But for me, what would fulfill me the most would be to be running a production mm. company, yeah. Yeah. producing mm. films. And then if I want to star in them, absolutely, I can yeah. star in one or two of them. But I think mm. it's interesting you've, you've gone in that direction. Cause one of the questions that we have for you is, you know, where you see yourself in the next five years. So, of course, that I'm assuming that that plan... In the next five years, I'll be president of Ghana. Come on. Wow. wow. One time. One you time. Villages. One time. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first, okay? You heard it here first. This is where the scene yeah. was yeah. dropped. Yes. Okay. And we shall El back you. El Presido, that's Absolutely. what you call me. You go here. Oh, wow. We'll back you. Commanda. If, if I'm still in this world. Oh, you will be here. You will be here, don't worry. I, I need to drop my kids to you. So no, you're not going anywhere. Chief Absolutely. campaign manager, I'll give them to you. Oh. Chief campaign manager. Absolutely. I like the fact that you're bold. Yes. Uh-huh. And you know exactly what you want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you go for it mm -hmm. right. because yeah. and unlike a lot of our people mm. christians mm. we're praying for something yes. mm. but god should give me something then god gives you an opportunity mm. and they sit down waiting for godo mm -hmm. there's a book waiting mm -hmm. for godo you're yeah. waiting why are you not putting anything in yeah. it because mm. the opportunity has come you're asking for opportunity yes. yeah. you yeah. get it and you pray yeah. We assume and it's that supposed to come straight into stand. our hand. Usually it comes to us, all we have to do is reach out and grab yes. it. And when yeah. we're waiting, who's going to come put it in my yes. hand? God rarely comes to put something in your hand. Mm. I guess sometimes, but in my experience, you always have to. Yeah, definitely. Mm. James 2, 4, 16. Legacy. Legacy. Works. I love that. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the Bible does say that in James 2, that, you know, faith without works is dead. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important that we recognize i love that auntie esme's touched on this actually because it never gets spoken about but on here it's when it gets spoken about <laughs> you know and i want to add i want to add that um there were there are times when i despair because course, as you can course, see i'm the course. oldest person here I, I despair that where is ghana going and what about especially the yes. the quality of the the of the workforce in mm. ghana yes. they think it is the leadership that have to do something yes. but i think it has to come Oh yeah, From bottom I don't up, believe in I don't believe in our leaders. I don't right. I don't believe in leaders in general mm. anymore. I believe do what you can for yourself and let the rest happen. But you need to also have a mindset that you need to nurture yourself to become a leader. Yes. Mm. And um, I I don't believe in sitting and doing nothing about it, expecting yes. that it will be handed over to you on a silver platter. No. It doesn't happen that way. I think work I, that I way. would love to stretch a little further from what you're saying about everybody assuming this role of leadership. In order for people to assume that role, they need to know what it is that a leader is. Absolutely. And it needs to be really defined. There yeah. is power yes. in leading from the bottom That's up. right. Mm. Absolutely. Dwelling among Absolutely. people, recognizing. Which is what I meant by I don't believe in the, the people at and the top. Because once again, going. that's doing yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we put our perception and our faith in these yeah. people because someone is a president. Oh my God, he's, he's, oh my, he's, yeah. he's just a human being. Yeah. He's he might fail. Yeah. He might fail. He might succeed. Yeah. But in the meantime, while he's deciding, we yeah. should be doing our own things on the ground. As opposed to, so when I say that I want to be president, it's not necessarily that I want to, but I'm, I'm saying there's too many people in Ghana. We talk quite a bit. We mm, form committees. We, we form, Talking let's shop. form a committee and talk about it in two months. Yeah. Yeah. Send me the proposal. I'll show it to my boss. We'll mm. see what we can do. Mm. And that's the one thing I learned from Nigeria that for me is one of the most valuable things. I do, I don't talk that much. They just do it. They don't talk they that much. If it. we talk today and they're saying we're going to do a project and this thing, today being Tuesday, yeah. By probably Wednesday, Thursday, somebody would have sent me a text. Done, yeah. Oh, I've sent yeah. you the money. How are we doing this thing? That is, yeah. that is, wow. yeah. And it's the honest truth. Yeah. Unfortunately, they do that in both the good and the bad ways. Mm -hmm. However, if you learn from the good ways, we shouldn't be. What's going on in Ghana and how we're all just sitting back and everything? It's, yeah. it's fantastic that we back. all just Far too late. sit back and do it. So for I me, think, in I think five we're laid years. Back in, in, in some very interesting ways, and actually, we need to diversify on our laid backness. Yeah. Um, it's good to be a laid-back person, but in the right direction. 
and we pick and choose. Yes. So what I meant <laughs> what with the wear. Nigerian thing is, yeah. don't get it twisted. They also yeah. have the, the the part of their aggressiveness that that they use in a bad way. Mm. So mm. they might be the most corrupt. They might be the most, but they're also the most um, inventive, the most hardworking, the most. So it depends on what direction. Yeah. You take. We 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 we've getters. just picked. We are not. We've just picked the Namibia yeah. um, laid backness, and we at yeah. some point need to decide that we cannot be laid back about everything. We have to. So for me, it's same in five years. I want to be a mover in terms of I don't want to be at the bottom just shouting why aren't you doing this at mm. the top I will be at the top also doing something mm. Mm. and then those who want to follow me no problem those who don't want to at the very least I know that I'm, I've, I've, I've made some sort of change mm. the whole point of getting into acting no lie you know, I know we love to do this growing up all we would do is laugh and point out our own films mm -hmm. ha 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 look at how bad that film is ha yeah. ha ha I can see the boom ah my name film is uh, useless this mm. and that mm. and I'm thinking these are, these are your own films. So who, who are you thinking is going to come do these films yeah. correctly so you yeah. can make noise about them? Yeah. Because if you're not going to say, okay, I get that they're bad and everything, but maybe we can do better. Or how can I also do better and everything? Yeah. So when it came to, in a way that I can also be part of the industry in some way, I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe that's going to be my legacy. Maybe at the end of it, they will be able to say that he went into it. And by the time that he was done, he affected quite a bit of change. Mm. He didn't leave it Actually, in the same place that he found it. Talking of that, in, in bygone years, mm -hmm. Ghana film industry was supposed to be I'm the I'm aware, best. I'm aware. And the Nigerians came here to learn. I'm aware. And oh, we wow. shot great films. Mm. Yes. Along the line, something happened. Maybe complacency, I don't know. It quite possibly, possibly is. And uh, there's something you said about, you know, when, when you talked about being the first president, mm -hmm. that resonates with me because I used to say as a child and into my university days that, do, that I'll yeah. be the first female president One time. of Ghana. I tell you, and chief then, campaign manager, if you play your cards right, so well, I'll give you vice president. And, and then um, the coups happened oh. and yes. I kind of went a different direction yes. and, and lost it. Hmm. But I always, I was a student like leader that, as yeah. well in, yeah. in this, and I used to say, and I was, you know, champion, mm. really um, radical. And I thought I'll be a, the first lady president of Ghana. You heard it here first, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it kind anything, of didn't happen. Is, well, but as long as we you try, know, I think that's all we um, can do. I, You know, if I'm your campaign manager, I'm, I'm, I'll smear the president as ever. Don't, don't worry. There don't you worry, go. Don't worry. There you go. There but you yeah. go. Hopefully, in a couple of years, everything will be better. But if not, at least we have life, right? Mm. There's, there's a part of this interview, or this, this conversation, actually, more importantly, because it's been authentic, um, that I just haven't let go of. You were talking about when you uh, were training, and there's a reference you made. I'm paraphrasing now, because uh -huh. it's been a little while back. But you said, you know, you, you, you quoted and said, we trained together, when we were talking about how you broke the news to your parents. Um, mm -hmm. about transitioning from business finance, IT, accounting, into acting. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk about it in the context of the average Ghanaian. Yes. Taking it back to being multi-hyphenated, yes. having these skills, battling with what do I, you know, what do I prioritise? Yes. How do I tell people that out of all of these six things that I'm fantastic at and I'm lending 100% to each, because that's possible. <laughs> you can do more than one thing and give it oh 100% yeah, yeah, and do it yeah. well. I'm here to testify and tell somebody. Um, but there is... There, my point and the point that I want to make is what, what how, how do you encourage a millennial Ghanaian who doesn't want to disappoint their parents and is, is battling with that part I don't I want to do this but I don't want to disappoint people we know what it's like culturally yeah. for the majority it can be quite difficult uh, to transition past what everybody's going to think yeah. You know, I love that you highlighted about your parents and how difficult it was for them because they definitely had friends saying, hey, how, will you, how far was all this thing that we had? And funny enough, now all those friends are calling them saying, oh, can Molly pass by my office, please? I want to take a photo with him. Mm -hmm. Or like, wow. is he around? Or all those oh, people. Oh, how the those, tables turn. Those people who I went to school with who would find out. So they were looking at me. So, man, how's, how's the acting? How's the acting? <laughs> like, you know, because maybe they had a job in a bank or whatnot. Mm. Uh, how's the acting? Like, with all this. And Trying now, to be condescending. Now everyone's like, guy, I'm so proud of you, man. In my office, I keep telling people I know you. You I, know, I, yeah. I keep telling people that you that's my friend. I'm like, you're not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're all my friends. But mm -hmm. everyone's allowed to believe in what they... What I would say to the young... young um, it's quite a shame, but the way God set up life, nobody can live your life for you. Not, e not even your parents. Mm. Not even your parents. So 
it's great that we acknowledge that it might be disappointing to them because especially for what they've done for us, we should yes. always acknowledge that, hey, how, how are they going to feel about it? Mm. Unfortunately, even they can't live our lives for mm. us, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm. No matter how badly your father wants you to become a doctor, if that's not what you have in you, in your heart, unfortunately, he's yeah, not going to be able happen. to live your life for yeah. you. And that was my decision. I had to make the decision on my own. I'm like, mom, dad, this is what I have decided to do. I'm acknowledging that it's going to be tough for you. Mm. I'm acknowledging that uh, I'm not trying to disappoint you or anything, but this is what I have, and I would hope that you would at least allow me to have some sort of... And for them, my happiness was more important than other people's perception of who their powerful. son is. Mm. So you can hope that your parents can, can think like that. Ob obviously, it's not going to be the same. Mm. However, nobody can live your life for mm. you. So That's so powerful. You should always do what's... We're not going to be here forever. We're thankful that we are here. But we're not going to be here forever. So mm. the things that we can do that will bring us some sort of joy, some sort of peace, some sort of, you know, the good feelings. While we're here, I would say go for it. Mm. If, yeah. if, if that means you want to bake bread by the side of the road and you actually have that joy in your heart, it's okay, you'll do it. Maybe you won't be the big doctor that your parents <coughs> thought you would be. Are you okay inside you? Yeah, that's, maybe that's what God... Not all of us can be Bill Gates. Not all of us can be CEOs. Not all of us can be this. Not all of yeah. us can be that. Yeah. Pick the part that makes you happy and then you go from there. Mm, absolutely. Hope for the best. Absolutely. No, it's been an awesome conversation. This has been another episode of IYMI. We have been joined by none other than Maoli Gavor. If you aren't already following us on socials and him on socials, make sure you do. Very easy to find us. We are IYMI, the podcast. He is Maoli Gavor. Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, and yeah, we'll be back with you for another episode shortly. Bye.